What's up desktopers, Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding and we are back with another video and today I'm wrapping up the 2021 New York Pro Pre-Judging the Men's Open Bodybuilding. This is part two. I've also done the Classic Physique 212 and Wellness as well. So you can click in the link in the description below or the card just above if you do wanna watch that as well. But let's get straight into this one and we're gonna start with Nick Walker versus Justin Rodriguez. Nick Walker has made his mark on the IFB Pro League. If he didn't last year placing fourth at Chicago, he will by most likely winning the 2021 New York Pro because he looks amazing. Honestly, I had high expectations for Nick and he even exceeded them. But let's go through it and break down if Justin Rodriguez can actually beat Nick Walker in this 2021 New York Pro after winning the Indy Pro last weekend. So I'm going to break down this top two call out. And I'm also going to break down the guys from third to sixth as well and give my opinion on all of them. So let's break it down. Justin Rodriguez versus Nick Walker. And we'll start with a front relax just to start with, you know, obviously just who standing there is best. And for me, it's Nick Walker. He looks so imposing on that front, relaxed. And really, he's not that much shorter than Justin Rodriguez. And Justin does have the width on the shoulders. But I think Nick's added so much muscle to that upper body that really it sort of compensates. And I you know, I thought Nick would actually look almost like a little bit narrow. I was incredibly wrong on that. And Nick's legs and everything just looks so hard and so carved out that it looks very, very impressive. So let's go to the front double bicep. And this is a strong shot for Justin, but Nick is winning this. You can just see how big and ridiculous Nick's arms are in this pose. His abs look great. This looks much better than when he's actually doing the vacuum last year, where he sort of expanded that midsection. And you can tell he's done work with his midsection all year, um, vacuums and whatnot as well. And, and it actually looks tighter than his progress pitches as well. So very, very impressed. Nick Walker wins that front double bicep, in my opinion. So let's go to the front lat spread. Now this, for me, is an easy win for Nick Walker. Um, he looks so impressive. He posted up a front lat spread uh, just the day before the show, and you could see how thickly muscled he was through his arms, and there's really no gaps there, and I think he actually looks a lot harder on stage than he did off stage. So front lat spread for me goes to Nick Walker, and it is an impressive pose for Justin Rodriguez too because he is so wide across the shoulders. So let's go to the side chest. This one for me is an easy win for Nick Walker as well. From the waist down, I believe he wins it. He's just so granite. Um, you know, the hamstring hangs really well. The upper body, I think he's just too thick. Where Justin might beat him is his, thick, his chest is probably a little bit thicker than Nick's, but everywhere else, I believe Nick is winning this pose. Let's move to the back double bicep. This is probably Justin's strongest pose, and he honestly has one of the best back double biceps in the IFB Pro League. Now, it gets a little closer, but... Nick Walker beats him on Justin's strongest pose. I mean, in the back alone, Nick is at least matching him at worst. I think he's actually beating him um, in the back and the, you know, the biceps and all that sort of stuff in the upper body, I suppose, of that back double bicep. And then from the waist down, he's definitely beating him. His legs look bigger and they're harder and his glutes are further in. So Nick Walker wins the back double bicep against Justin Rodriguez. Let's go to the back lat spread. Now, Justin Rodriguez on the right was having some serious issues opening his lats. This was not the only time where he could just couldn't open them. He, I don't know whether it's a cramping issue or whether he's just trying to overpose them and flex his back too hard. Not sure what the exact issue was, but he could not open his lats whatsoever. Nick here just looks so super balanced. Uh, back is really wide, just looks complete and, and does not look like a bodybuilder that's in his 20s. He looks like a guy that's like in his 30s with that sort of maturity to the muscle. Let's go to the side tricep and again, for me, Nick Walker wins this. He's got more pop to his actual tricep, but the rest of the pose as well looks very, very impressive. Um, the rest of the pose he wins sort of, I wouldn't say by a landslide, but he just overall looks more, I suppose, complete and balanced in this pose as well. And then we go to the ab and thigh. This is one I thought Justin might get the upper hand on, but Nick wins again, in my opinion. Now, you can make a case for Justin here. He's a little bit more, I suppose, aesthetically pleasing, but Nick is just gnarly. He looks crazy here in terms of his conditioning. And when you look at his abdominals, you know, he's really brought them in this year, I think. And the fact that he's added muscle everywhere else and hasn't grown that waist... I think that's a big plus for Nick Walker. And then we move to the most muscular. This one is an easy win for Nick Walker as well. So when you really analyze it, I believe Nick Walker wins every single pose, which you can't say too much about the top two at any pro show. Even at the Mr. Olympia, generally the Mr. Olympia will lose a pose to a second or third place guy. But 
I don't think Nick Walker loses a pose in this entire show. So that's really impressive, the fact that Nick can actually do that. So let's look at the guys that placed from third down to sixth. So from uh, left to right, we've got Muhammad al -Aman, we've got Hassan Mustafa, we've got Dorian Haywood, and then on the right, we have Blessing Awadabu. So we'll start with Muhammad al -Aman. Now, he came second last weekend to Justin Rodriguez. I think he could slip as far as sixth here. He just doesn't look like the same bodybuilder. You see the same cuts in the quads and everything, but his color looks very, very bad. He looks like very dry. He looks like he needs more oil. There's just something wrong with his physique where he's holding more water as well. I'm not too sure, but it just doesn't look the same as he did look last week. Last week, he looked really hard. Carved from stone this week, it just does not look the same. Hassan Mustafa, second on the left. You can see the freaky amount of muscle this dude has. It's just absolutely crazy. He is just packed full of muscle, especially on those legs. We all know that. Just not hard as he needs to be, really. Like, if he was much harder, like if he was Nick Walker hard, he'd be challenging him for the win, probably. But he's just not, and he struggles to get in that sort of condition. Now, I mentioned it in pretty much every video, but he did Ramadan pretty much up until about three, four days ago. So he's got to literally change his whole body clock and carb up at the same time. There's just too many variables for me. And I think that's probably why he's not at his very best here. Uh, then Dorian Haywood, I think that he looks better than last week. Um, I think some of these other guys actually got worse, but Dorian Haywood, I believe, got better. Uh, he was sweating a little bit, so maybe he can be even better again. But I was pretty impressed with Dorian Haywood here. I, it's pretty much between Dorian and Hassan for that third place. And I'm probably saying Hassan now just because of that crazy freaky muscle and the fact that his legs are so much bigger than Dorian Haywood's that I'd probably give it to Hassan just, but I'd say it's still up in the air. And I think it might even come down to uh, finals to decide who's third place here. And then Blessing of Waterboo, he could place as high as fifth here. Um, I believe he could beat Muhammad el um, But if Muhammad fixes his tan and comes in a little bit drier, then he will take that fifth place spot. But Blessing of Waterboo, I think is... I don't know if he's improved here, to be honest. Um, he's bigger. I do know that he was trying to come in a lot fuller this time around. And you can see it, like from front lat spread and a few other shots, he does look much fuller. But I believe he sacrificed just that little bit of that hardness for that fullness. And I feel like that maybe he overdieted that last month of his prep. And, you know, you can't really just gain that muscle back by actually, you know, just eating up. You can gain a bit of a fullness back, but maybe you couldn't gain it all back. But it's very interesting to see how these guys will actually play out. I had Arne Wien actually placing up in my top three, I think it was in my predictions. Um, Arne unfortunately came in a little bit off. Uh, he had been coming in a lot better the last couple of years, but this time around, unfortunately, he missed the mark a little bit. And uh, there's a few other guys down the lineup as well that you know did look really good, but it was a stacked lineup. The top 10 was... Um, extremely complete. I mean, down to 10th place, everyone was really good. So I thought it was a great lineup. But to me, it seems like Nick Walker is going to pretty much run through this contest. I believe he's going to take out this win and he's going to win the New York Pro and qualify for the 2021 Mr. Olympia. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. How good is Nick Walker? Is this guy a top six Mr. Olympian potentially? Top 10? Let me know who you think he places because Justin, Justin Rodriguez last year placed top 10 in that Mr. Olympia. And Nick Walker is, you know, for me, pretty handily beating him in this show. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Place your top five, your top six, or just let me know who you think is winning out of Nick Walker and Justin Rodriguez. Guys, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, including all my coverage of the 2021 New York Pro and all the fallout, what will happen after the contest as well. Also, to get the live stream, the link is in the description below. I also want to credit Flex uh, Magazine as well, using their images off Instagram too. And uh, yeah, make sure you get on that. The links are in the description below for both of them. So that's it for me. For Xavier Wills, Desktop Bodybuilding, we are out.